And close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to stay right here in the present moment so you can see the movements of the mind. Because it's the movements of your mind that are causing trouble. We all act for the sake of happiness, but then we start doing things and saying things and thinking things that actually destroy our happiness. And where does it come from? It comes from the mind. So you want to watch that. You want to stay with the breath, because the breath is right close to the mind. Any intention comes up and you catch it in time. And if you breathe with a sense of ease and well-being, then it's easier to say no to the intentions that are not all that skillful. If you can solve the problem of why you cause stress to yourself inside, you've, caused, you've solved a lot of the problems right there. Today we're commemorating the, the day of the Buddha's first teaching. After he gained his awakening, he sat and meditated and enjoyed the bliss of release for seven weeks. And then he asked himself, is there anybody I can teach? And they thought of, ultimately he thought of the five monks who had looked after him when he was going through his austerities. And so walked for about a week from Bodh Gaya to Sarnath. And after convincing them that it was worth listening to him, he sat them down and he taught them about the Four Noble Truths. Now there's what there's, there is suffering, what is suffering and stress, and then why it's caused. And the cause, he said, is found inside. It's in your own craving, your own clinging, your own ignorance, holding on to things that are actually bad for you. And if you develop the path to the end of suffering, okay, then you don't have to do that clinging anymore. This is what we're doing as we meditate. We're trying to get the mind to be still so it can watch itself, exercise right view, right resolve all the right factors of the path. They're all right here, if we develop them. The concentration that we're working on, this is the food for the rest. It also enables your right view to see things clearly. Because it's easy to know things in theory, but not all that easy to actually apply that knowledge in practice. The mind needs to be made stable. Once the mind is stable, then you can work with it. So when the Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths, he wasn't pointing anywhere else. He wasn't saying something interesting about suffering out there. He's talking about what's going on here inside the heart, inside the mind. The word noble there has several meanings. One, it means that this is part of a noble search, to look for something that is deathless inside. And the word arya, which means noble, can also be translated as universal. These truths are universal. They're true for everybody, no matter what your nationality, no matter what your background. What the Buddha said about suffering is true for all of us. What he said about the cause is true for all of us. And the path to its cessation, both the cessation and the path, are true for all of us as well. But the path is something we have to bring into being for the sensation, cessation to happen. So this is something we work on. As we observe the precepts, get the mind to be concentrated, and try to gain some insight into what's going on inside the mind. This is why this teaching has survived all this long, because it really works. And it points to something right inside you. You don't have to look for the solution to your problem out there. You look for it inside. The Buddha gives you advice, he gives you a few pointers, but it's up to you to actually put them into practice. So try to develop the path. Because it's a universal path to the universal solution to a universal problem. And once this problem is solved, then there's nothing else to weigh down the mind. 